we take our moiety, our spark and your people from Gilper and Muckle to the Eagle Oak and Crow, and we take our meat who we is from our mother. So me, I'm a muckra person, so I take my moiety from the eagle, so I'm a wed tan eagle. With the black shag old Natacha, we don't harm him, will any get him if we're really hungry? Or oh, poorly to the pelican, and there's a, another little bird what they call pinker, with them three birds they special they for the barker. The black shag will tell us where the fish, where the fish are, and the pelican will do the same thing. And pinker will eat the river worm. There's a little worm, it's only about this long, little red sort of worm like a tiger worm, and it's native for the river. And pinker will tell you where the worm is. So you go and you lift the logs up, the bits of sticks was laying around, and bits of stone, and you'll find worms for fishing. But when you do that, you leave a couple of worms for Binko. You chuck a couple out because he'll be watching you all the time, so you feed him too. And this is the Barker, the Darling River, the Barker. Where I was reared up, I don't like sitting inside of a building and doing my artwork because I get no inspiration out of it. But sitting out here, now and again you might hear a bird whistle, you might hear an old crow come past and sing out or something. Old Wako. I'm carving a crane. He'll have a yab in his mouth, walking around the weeds looking for yabbies. With this wood here, I didn't cut this tree. This was cut where they cut the big old river red gum down to make sleepers for the railway and for gardens. And what I do, I just go along and pick the wood up and, and shape it into what I want. I see something and I'll just draw it out, cut it and, and shape it to what I want to do, work with the wood. I, I like carbon dead wood because when I, with my carving, I'm bringing it back to life. Just in my mind, I bring it back to life in a different form. I carve birds and that because we are part of the environment, it's just natural. I got to talk for the animals but can't talk. I got to talk for the black shag and I got to talk for this muscle because it can't talk. Everything need to live because everything but it's the smallest insect to the muscle that's a part of the food chain. I think that everyone should take some sort of animal and say, this is my totem, this is who I'm going to be. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. You say, this is my totem and this is who I'm going to respect and this is who I'm going to fight for. Yeah, this old swan, black swan, the old young ghoulies. They fly in north to meet the water coming down. Yeah, this one's called uh, Life Coming Back to Moon Lake, Lake Wachugany, Wilcania. And this one was done after the first big millennium drought. And again, when the water was filling, the lake was filling up. And this is sort of good happy times. And this is what happens when we get a flood and water in our rivers and in the lake system, all the swans and that come out, the fish come out into the lakes to spawn, and the swans come out and the other water birds lay their eggs, and it's just abundant nut. And just the darling lilies, and they don't grow in the lakes, they're not like the water lilies up the top end. And, and in the Northern Territory, these ones grow out in the flat, and after a big rain, they'll come up, but also after a big flood, goes through and the lilies will come up so we do need water in the flood plains and we do need water in the lakes it's because the black swan and the pelicans and the little gorillas they got to have still water because they like they got a float and nest and see how this one's swimming up and she's moving stuff around for her nest for the eggs see and that one the same coming back swimming back just to check her eggs and they'll go again. The name of the print is Bark of the Forgotten River and the Desecration of the Minindy Lakes. 
this bark area before that fish killed back in 2019. This is the river and this is the Menindi lakes and all the fishing that was dead. And the animals died, the emus and kangaroos and that. And there was a little bit of water at the Menindi in the weir pool. And this is the lakes. I done the print just before the fish kill when I started to really take water out of the lakes. When a yabby die or the fish, to, all the bones break up, so you got little bits of mussel, bits of yabbies, and dead fish, see? And uh, yeah. if I would have done it after these three cod, they would have been just skeletons too, but all the dead fish. And it's three generations of Granny Moisey's family, mine, my niece and my other little younger niece. And so that's how all our hand prints and why the hand print is in the lake, that means stop enough, you destroyed our country enough, you're destroying our culture enough, you're destroying the environment enough. Stop and look and see the damage what you are doing. Because of what's happening to the environment, I am changing and I'm, I don't know, it's hard for me to explain, but my personality is changing, my artwork's changing, and I just hope that one day my artwork will get the point across and plus other Aboriginal people, not only just Aboriginal people, but white people, black people, our artwork got to tell the story of what's happening.